Alright guys, so um, some of you will recognize this piece. This is um, something that we knocked up in stream earlier today. And I've just sort of taken the recording here and I'm going to sort of sit down and chat to you guys. Um, sort of talk over it a little bit. And uh, have it slowed down. I think it's only sped up by about a thousand percent, which sounds like a lot. But uh, I think the whole piece took about three and a half hours uh, to to do. And um, so it's, I think it's going to be about a 30 minute video or thereabouts. I can slow it down even more if you guys want me to, so let me know. But I just wanted to jump in over the top and sort of chat a little bit uh, to you guys as we go, because this style is very different to the stuff that you would have seen from here. This is more of like a Photoshop painting type uh, sort of... Yeah, so I'm sort of trying to create a little bit more of a tutorial and sort of speak uh, sort of what I'm thinking and why I'm doing things. Um, so I guess to get started... Um, well, I'll talk about the piece, but before I do, um, before we stop doing this, I'll, I'll talk about the line work. So you can see I'm sort of doing a little bit of line work just with a hard round brush. And you'll notice that when people paint in Photoshop, they will have sort of different levels of where they're at in terms of some people can do like a, a scribble so faint and, and sloppy and then make an amazing painting out of it, whereas some need really fine line work. I'm not sure where I am yet. I haven't been doing this long enough to figure that out, but um, I feel a little bit more confident when I've got something a little bit sharper in there. So that's uh, sort of what I went for there, um, although it still is a little bit loose. So, um, but so that's where that's where I'm at at the moment. I guess it's a personal thing for you. If you feel like you need it a little bit tighter, then there's no reason why that's a problem at all. So um, feel free to sort of do what works for you. Um. So about the piece, if you guys have, if any of you guys have played Hearthstone before, or maybe you haven't, but there's a card in there called Doctor Boom, and he basically summons these Boom bots. And uh, Doctor Boom has been removed from sort of standard play, Blizzard has been saying. So um, a lot of people have been doing artwork about Doctor Boom going away, but I decided to go the other way and say, hey, what about his little Boom bots? And so this is sort of titled Adopt a Boom Bot, and so it's a little bit of a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit of fun. So um, yeah, it's pretty much it um so yeah let's talk about technique so um what i'm doing now is i, I basically marquee selection the entire thing and just filled it with a flat color um, that just gives me a little bit of solid shape to work from and then i can lock transparent pixels and sort of work from there um i, I end up sort of removing the lock and just painting um that's one of the things that I'm still working on. Two things um, that I'm really sort of trying to work on when I, with my painting, and that's A, working zoomed out. So working at a level like this, you know, I've got my little window to the left there, um, because you don't need to be working on all the details to start with. You want to be getting all your colors right, getting all your shadows right, and sort of laying things in right to start with, and then you can go in and start cleaning things up. Um, and then the second thing is... Um, the second... Thing is, I've completely forgotten. So, <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about. Um, I think it was it was probably to do with sort of painting over the top of my line work. So, um, oh yeah, sort of treating it like a painting, I guess. So when you think about it, um, because I'm very used to that comic book style where you do your line work and then you color underneath it, and and that is that. You know, that's sort of what you do. But uh, for this stuff, you really got to treat it like a painting, and you got to think about it. It's like if you had a canvas and you did a sketch on the canvas, you don't just sort of marquee that out or move it around and move it up or anything like that. No, you just paint on top of it. And so that's something that's, that technique is relatively new to me. And it's something that I'm working on. I'm really enjoying doing this style. And it's not, it's not my normal style, but um, the fact is I'm having fun with it. So, and I haven't had fun with art for a while, if that makes sense. So, you know, just sat down and just enjoyed it. So, um, so that's certainly sort of what I'm doing here. All right, so um, basically you can see um, I'm moving around the place everywhere. And the first thing that I'll do as well, as you can see, is, is cast shadows. I usually lay my cast shadows, which are shadows that are being thrown by other objects. So you can see we've got that raised part at the top of the bomb there. It's sort of throwing this hard shadow down. And then underneath those eye sockety things, I guess, I don't know, eyeballs, um, r robot eyeballs. We can see there's like um, sort of some hard shadow coming in there as well. And then I sort of cut it off and then have some of that, the, the bomb color coming through. And then you'll see me later, I'll sort of cut in a little bit more blue into that as well. Um, it's sort of one of the techniques I like. I like sort of having shadows hard up against like a lighter sort of gradient almost, just so it sort of makes it pop a little bit more. Um, 
I'm definitely not going for realism here. So um, let me just say that to start with. Uh, realism is not where I want to be with my painting. I want it to be cartoony like I usually do, you know, have a little bit of uh, sort of flair behind it. So that, that's my goal. I'll talk about these eyes real quickly as I'm doing them. So you can see I get this nice soft brush and I changed the brush mode at the top there to um, hard light. So I set it the, I do the yellow and I do it in hard light and sort of just cut that in all around it. Um, and this is with any glow. Uh, you can just do it. You don't need the circles or anything like that. I just had those circles as a base. And then I use the use the hard light brush with your particular color. And then once you've got that in, take the color dodge um, blending mode. Not on your layer, but I'm talking about on your brush. So you can do that where you select your brush and you change your opacity and flow and stuff like that. Change that to say um, color dodge and it will just like strengthen the color completely and it sort of will add some really nice effect to it. Really great for glows. You'll see me do it on the top glow and also on the uh, the bottom sort of belt buckle glow as well. But as I said, I sort of jump around the place and sort of, okay, now I'm working on this eye socket, now I'm working on this bomb, now I'm working on this gold, now I'm back on the eye socket. And for me, that's important because I never want to get bugged down in one spot. I want to lay in a little bit, cut in a little bit, do a little bit of detail, clean it up, and then I want to move on to something else, work on that for a bit, and then come back and say, oh, actually, you know what? I buggered that up, something chronic. Let's, you know, let's fix it up. But, you know, it, it, you need to be refreshing your eyes. And it, whether it be taking breaks or sort of working on other sections, I find working on other sections is fantastic. Um, you know, with this one, I was streaming, so I couldn't really just walk away and refresh the eyes. Another way that people do it is by flipping the canvas horizontally, and it gives you a completely different view of your piece. And so you can start seeing mistakes and be like, oh, well, that eyeball really shouldn't be there. So... Um, something to keep in mind as well. So yeah, I'm just sort of working in all the different sections. I'll talk a little bit about the brushes I use. As I said, I sort of only, I mean, anyone that knows me will know that I've been a manga studio advocate for the last couple of years, and I've sort of been very anti-Photoshop. So when I opened up Photoshop on stream the other day, people were like, what? But um, I sort of jumping back in here, I really enjoy painting in Photoshop, and I think that it handles painting a lot better. Manga Studio is fantastic for my sort of comic book style artwork. Um, I love line working in Manga Studio, but there's something about Photoshop painting which is it, it works better. I don't know why, but it just does. And um, I can't talk too much about my brushes because I'm really not too sure where they came from. It's sort of just opened up and they were in there um, but I have a f I, I did get some more recent stuff and just did a little bit of a clean out so I'll put a couple of YouTube links below one of them will be for a gentleman by the name of Arthur Grimdolf and I think I'm butchering his name there so I do apologize for that um, but he is a brilliant um, a brilliant artist and I'll link to his DeviantArt page ah oh, there you see the blue glow at the top I used exactly the same technique you you slow it down a little bit, you'll you'll be able to see me change those blending modes and sort of where I use them. So um, yeah, definitely check that out. And then I sort of use a textured brush to erase the glow, and it sort of adds that sort of chipped up sort of chipped up magicy bits, I guess. Um, but yeah, so Arthur's. Um, I'll put a link to his YouTube channel below. Jump over to his DeviantArt and download his brushes. They're fantastic, um, and they're really sort of what I use most of the time. And then. Um, I'm not sure if the, I do use any of them, but I think there's a few left over from uh, John's uh, brush packs. So I'll put a link to John's channel. Most of you guys will know him. We've sort of done past the art and a few other things with him before. So um, I'm fairly certain that a few of those brushes are still his as well. So credit where credit's due. Go check out his stuff. Um, he's got his brush pack available um, probably somewhere on his channel. Um, he used to link it in videos. I'm not sure... It does still now, so hopefully it does. But if not, check out some of the older videos, and, and the link should be there. Um, so, yes, yeah, so now I'm working on uh, sort of the top sort of section. You'll see me work on the string a little bit as well. But basically what I'm doing, guys, is um, I'm, I'll have my base color, and there's a little gradient trick that I do. See how I sort of add that hard light to make that shadow pop a little bit more. Um, very cartoony, um, I find. Um, but yeah, so so with the with the, how it's sort of working is when when you're working like this, I set my flow to about thirty percent and keep my opacity at hundred percent. So I'll have my base color and then I'll lay in my darker color or my lighter color that I want to blend to. And when you lay that down, I don't push down super hard. I'd sort of you know a nice gentle sort of stroke. You'll get that color mixed with that under color. And so what it does is it creates this. Uh, you know the, this blend between these two colors but it's never exactly perfect so what we do then is we use the alt key or the eyedropper or if you're like me you can set it to the your pressure to your pen on your wacom tablet 
I just have the pen set to um, to the eyedropper tool, bang, click that color, and then start stroking again, and then bang, click that color stroke again, bang, click that color stroke again, and you'll gradually start building up this gradient um, and this nice, smooth sort of blend. Also, with painting, there comes this stage, and you can see it now with this string at the top, although it's getting a little bit better now, but what I like to call it is the messy stage. And it's the stage that I used to get to when I tried to do this stuff. And I didn't realize that there was another stage after it. I thought it was just the messy stage. And it's the stage where it looks like this, basically. And you look at it and you're like, this looks horrible. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know. This is, this is really, really bad. But it does get better. <laughs> it does. Um, it, all you got to do is keep working at it and keep refining it and keep sort of, you know, zoom in a little bit, sort of clean it up a little bit, fix up the shape, get those blends a little bit nicer, maybe uh, color bend a little bit more. What we mean when we say color bending is we're like, if you're painting in orange, you don't have to shade with dark orange or light orange. You can bend that color, sort of pulling a red, get daring, pulling some like a little bit more pinky, you know, color even in there. You know, that string at the top there is like a sort of like a beigey color, but in the end, I start shading with like a red, like a maroony sort of, um, you know, maroony brown sort of thing, you know. So it, it's certainly um, color bending and adding and mucking around with color is so important. It really deserves a separate video. I should. Have. I, I remember I did a workshop on on color theory um, a few years back, and I could probably should dig up the slides and sort of, you know, and impart sort of what knowledge I have and sort of how I manipulate color to do to do my bidding. Whoa. It's nothing evil like that, but um. So yeah, there's this messy stage in painting, and and I I, I, I there's any piece of advice that I can give um because I'm relatively new to this um. And so anyone else that is in my position or, you know, even maybe a bit newer, don't give up on that messy stage. I gave up so many times and I'm like, ah, I can't do this, it's too hard. And you see, you know, even with this cloth here, this sort of wrap, you know, I, I'd sort of get to this stage and be like, oh, it looks like poop. But um, if you keep refining it, keep working it, work your shadows, remember where your height, where your light is. And this is obviously a very standard light, you know, top left standard sort of thing that I generally do. No, and um, it will get better, I do promise you. And um, when it comes to your line work, you can see I'm sort of doing a little bit of a mix. What I want to be able to do is, is, is sort of block in that color like I did, then have my line work layer, and then just start painting on top. But I don't have that confidence yet. But as I progress with this piece, I suddenly gain that confidence a little bit as I'm going, and I'll start working basically directly over the top of your line work. And when you think about it, that's exactly like a painting. You know, that's what you can do, just work over the top of it. Um, and uh, sort of as I was mentioning before, and, and as I was progressing, I became a little bit more confident. I was also live streaming this as well, so I was a little bit nervous maybe with people watching me, but um, you know, in the end, I think it turned out all right, so I figured I'd uh, put it up here for you guys. Now, that color dodge and um, and hard light brush technique is about to come up again as well, so I'll give you a bit of warning um, when we do the little uh, center belt thing, so um, you'll see that pop up. But you see me working in some hard shadows in this belt, like right deep down in those recesses, and you see me sort of work that rim highlight, which is that sort of border, like there's the, you know around the back of the bomb. There's no light back there, but there's like this light edge that runs along the um, outside exterior to it. And we, and that's because when you remove line work, when you're doing comic book work, you've got line work, and so that shows separation. That's where you can tell where there's form and shape and everything like that. But without line work. You know, when you look at shapes around you and different lighting and stuff like that, and you completely desaturate like an image, all, all you've got is value. And so you need to be able to convey shapes and and designs. And uh, here comes that, that brush trick, by the way, so get ready for it. But no, you've got to be able to... Um, convey shapes and designs and form using value right and so you're not using you know you've got to use shadow you know light and dark basically and what rim highlights allow you to do is sort of add a little bit of edging and sort of um sort of show you, you know where a form stops and also gives you because obviously there'd be like a little soft light behind it maybe where it sort of just hits it and so i find rim highlights a great way of being able to control that 
um, and sort of working sort of dark shadows in there, what we call occlusion shadows. So you can see sort of where this metal joins with this, um, a little bit of metal, there's a real deep shadow, and that's called an occlusion shadow. And what we mean when we say occlusion shadow is kind of like where two objects join together, there will be a shadow. It doesn't matter if there's a hard light shining on it or a soft light or an indirect light or a bounce light or an, you know environmental lighting. You know, there's going to be this sort of occlusion shadow. And so um, take a look. If you get a chance, Google like occlusion shadows. I might be able to explain it a little bit better. But um, so that's what we mean when we say that. And then cast shadows are shadows which are cast by objects. So you can see the little arm dangling over the, the ribbon. That's showing a cast shadow. Um, you know, same with the eyeballs and that little metal bit at the top. So, so yeah. So but basically you can see I sort of just roughed in all the sort of basic shades and shapes and stuff like that for this ribbon and then I went off and did something else and then I come back and now what I'm doing is I'm working it so that's where I zoom in a little bit more and I start refining it and all I'm doing is using that eyedropper sample trick and if you watch just even uh, use YouTube to slow down the video if you want to but just watch on the left hand side don't watch the piece but watch the toolbar and you'll see it go from brush to eyedropper brush to eyedropper brush to eyedropper to eraser to eyedropper to eraser to eyedropper you know it's sort of i'm constantly sampling colors to sort of mix it in you know um and then also with my brush at 100 percent, my flow at a nice sort of 30 percent um you know i can also vary how much oh you know that's what flow is so if you drop your opacity you're changing your color but if my opacity is at 100 percent, if i select purple then what it's going to be is purple but depending on how hard i push and how like constant i sort of stroke over it how much paint is going to be sort of ejected out of the brush i guess is the best way of saying it um so that's sort of generally my painting setting is 100 percent opacity and around a 20 to 30 percent flow um I'm, now I'm going to do some font, some text, as you can see right in this. is a bit embarrassing. At least I didn't spell anything wrong, I guess. But I'm not the best at handwriting, but um, I think I came out okay. It's at night. So we can see sort of the message, I guess, is coming across a Dr. Boom bot. And at this stage, I'm pretty, you know, I'm getting close to sort of um, quite refined. You can see I do a few sort of tricks. The feet are not going to work a lot. I'm actually going to leave them because it's not going to be the eye catching part of the design. Like all the colors are up top. You're going to, your eye is going to be drawn there. And um, so I don't really need to worry too much about the feet. Um, so I sort of lay in the shadows and stuff like that, but I don't push it too far. And then also that ribbon around the back, you'll see me sort of select that and add like a little bit of a purple multiply layer to dull it down and soften it out a little bit as well later on down the track. Um, so a few little tricks that I can do that, because they're not going to be super visible elements, I can sort of not spend as much time on them if that makes sense. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about the wear and tear and how I do that. It's actually really, really simple. So um, when I've got my sort of solid shape, all I do is I, I draw this sort of random shape or a crack or a little hole or something like that with a real you know, somewhat darker color, maybe a color that I use from the shadows of that particular area. And then um, I'll zoom in a little bit more and do an even darker sort of just like along the edging a little bit. And then um, and then what I'll do is I'll take a light color, even a white, and sort of just run around the outside of that entire thing to make it sort of pop a little bit. And that's about all there is to it. There's no custom brushes involved or anything like that. It's just your standard, you know, you can do it with a with the default Photoshop round brush. Um, so that's pretty much it. You can see me just working in these areas here. As I said, this is like the messy stage and... I refine it a little bit, but I don't take it too far because, you know, your eye is always going to be drawn, I think, pretty much to his eyes because that's where sort of that color emanates from. I think there's a little bit too much color effects in this. I probably would have toned down that belt a little bit, but in the stream, I had to merge it for a particular reason to get into another layer. In the end, once it's merged, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to change. So um, I ended up being like, oh, you know what? It's, it's, it's like, we'll go with it. You can see me sort of drag up a, um, a blue gradient from the bottom uh, right and just drag that over the top of layers. Then I'll start erasing where it's a bit too much. I'll set the layer property to color as well. It's almost like a little environment light. Just adds a little bit of blue and then I can sort of strengthen it with a little bit of a blue rim light as well. I don't take it too far. Uh, this flame was pretty embarrassing. I don't know what I was starting with. It looked like a poop or something that I was drawing at the top there. But um, in the end, I used the same, exactly the same method. 
and then you seem to use a nice soft brush to sort of bring out that glow and then just use a textured eraser to sort of erase it and chop it up a little bit and then these sparks are done with like a path blur and so nothing too tricky there and it's, and it's all done relatively quickly um so hopefully that's um that gives you a little bit of um little tips and tricks on lighting and stuff like that i guess so yeah but um we weren't going to put it in to begin with. I was talking to the um, you know people on stream like, oh, it might be too many glows. But then once we added it in, we're like, oh, yeah, it actually does work. And you can see me sort of use a bit of an overlay layer, I think, or probably a color layer on that um, on that sort of rope. I keep calling it rope, you know, string, twine, bomb stuff, wick, I guess. Um, and I sort of add a little bit of orange there as well just to show a bit of that, uh, bit of that light. And the orange offsets really well with the... Um, but here I'm sort of working on the eyeballs, trying to add some more special effects. I don't work out, so <laughs> I just I just end up leaving them. But um, it's always good to try things, I think. So that's um, another example of me trying stuff, not really knowing what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, we're getting near the end. I'm doing a lot of final refinements now. And now I'm going to take that color dodge. Um, look at the top. So look where you select your brush. Look at the top there. It says color dodge. All I'm doing is I'm taking that color dodge on that flat layer. And sort of on my color layer and then just cut, dodging the color in the in that gold and when it comes out it comes out with a super bright sort of tarnished metal look and it looks really good so um i do it no don't do it too much but do it uh, just a little bit you can see me do it a little bit on the corners and stuff like that mm, ugh, tasty i love it uh super easy as well so i think here's where i'm going to add a little bit of blue so um this is what i mean about color bending um when you hear me use that term which is sort of pulling those colors in so instead of pulling a bit of blue into this bomb, I mean the bomb doesn't have blue in it. Like that's just not that's not there. But we can use color here to sort of tell a story. Those nice cool colors really accent, or you know have that accent with the sort of the reds and the yellows and stuff like that. Whenever I'm coloring metal, anyone knows metal steel or anything like that, I'm always pulling blue into it. It's I never I very rarely color desaturate. Hundred percent desaturate. Um, but yeah, I think I strengthened the shadow, uh, the, the, um, you can see underneath the eyeballs, there's that little sort of triangular patch. You'll see me go in there soon with a marquee tool. Hopefully I haven't already done it. I just added the multiply layer at the back there. Good work, Josh. But, um, no, you'll see me, um, if I'm going to do it soon. Maybe I'm not. Okay, so I'm just going to work on the background. I may have already done it. I can't see it. Um, so I'm just going to work on the background a little bit, add a little bit of texture to it. Nice blue sort of make give a little bit of visual interest but that's pretty much it guys i mean we're at the end of it now i know this is something different to my usual style um hopefully you guys me enjoyed me just kicking back and chatting with you guys if you guys got a kick out of this please do leave a like comment and uh, a like rating or a comment below and, and let me know because i i'd love to do more of this stuff i love doing this style and there's heaps more jobs that i can do for it so i would um i would totally get a kick out of doing some more of it if you guys enjoy it so if you do enjoy it let me know. That's the best way of telling me, hey, yeah, you're doing the right thing. This is what I want to see. So, um, yeah, and other than that, guys, thank you so much for, um, for hanging out. And uh, until next time, take it easy.